Hey everybody, John here. Let's talk about the iOS 11 Beta 6. So I downloaded this just yesterday and I just wanna talk about some of the cool new features that we have right now. So first thing you're gonna notice is when the animations, when the apps close. So if I open something up and I close it, you notice how it just animates shut real quick and it just kind of slowly does it so you see it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, another thing is the icon on the App Store looks a little different. You'll notice that right away. And one of the cool new features, of course this is very neat. Uh, this is the settings. So you just swipe up from the bottom and if you go ahead and long press on everything, you're gonna see like music come up. Um, you're gonna get more settings. Um, if you want to turn up the volume, you could do it there, do it there. Um, all these, a lot of these have, have a very cool, uh, animations here. So, you know, we can just kind of lock the screen. If you hard press on things, the 3D press, they call it, you can go ahead and see a lot of different things. Um, one thing you'll notice is that the calculator looks a little different. So, you know, we've got the rounded icons. It's, uh, it's kind of an interesting feature. I like it. Um, one of the things that I find very neat with this is the flashlight. So the flashlight, if you long press on that, you can turn the flashlight on low, medium, and high just by doing that. And it will remember those settings. So I, I kind of like that. So that's really neat. Another thing for the timer, you automatically go into timer and then you can set your timer right there. Um, picture, long press, you've got your 3D press, you've got take selfie, record video record slow-mo or take a portrait right from the setting screen here. The other thing you can do is for your, for your uh, home kit, all your home kit uh, settings are gonna be right there. You just long press on that. Now, later on, you can, you can set all these settings by just going into settings and control panel. So you can add more items to this and it'll get bigger and bigger, so it's kinda neat. Okay, uh, the next thing, if you swipe down from the top, so one thing I want to show you is I'm going to start some music, right? So I'm going to start some music right here. Okay, so I got some Beats 1 playing. And if I swipe down from the top, you're going to notice that you're going to see that playing. So what happens is they've merged the lock screen with notifications. So you're, this would be on the lock screen. If I lock screen right there, you're going to see that, right? If I go in you're gonna see your, your notifications and everything just as you normally would. Okay, and you could just swipe that away. So from the notification panel, you can go left for camera and right for widgets. We can send messages with, um, with screen effects. So there's echo and spotlight. This turned on, so if I go yes to that and I go screen effect, you're gonna see all that. So that is called echo effect. And when I send that, it'll send that with, with that screen effect. And now if I send another one with a different screen effect, and I'm gonna try the new one, which is called spotlight, which is very, very cool. Um, so it just puts a spotlight on it and sends it so I can send it and we'll send it to that person with a spotlight on the particular message that you had. So that's really neat. Um, the other thing that we have is podcasts. So if I play, let, let's say this, uh, I play, let's say a podcast that I'm listening to, you could see the video playing down at the bottom and that's actually moving right there. So that's really cool. So now we've got this podcast going. If I double tap on it, it'll go to full screen. So very nice. And then if you get out of it, you're, you're done with that. Now with uh, Siri, Siri has a much more natural voice. So you can just go, hey Siri, what's the capital of Wyoming? Cheyenne is the capital of Wyoming. So it's a little bit better. Hey Siri, how are you doing? All right, excellent. So there it goes. Now, if you'll notice, the orb at the bottom is different. So you'll notice that is very different. So we've got this shiny orb on the bottom, it really looks neat. Before we had kind of the waves, now we have this shiny orb waiting for you. And what's also very neat is that it can translate for us. 
So it'll translate to many different languages, like uh, Spanish and Chinese. Hey Siri, what is happy birthday in Chinese? In Mandarin, happy birthday is showing you quite look. Okay. Another thing we have here is called a files app. So this is new right here. So if you see right here, we got a files app. When you go into it, this is going to be like the fi the files the Finder app on the Mac. So you can have all the content stored on your iPad, on your iPhone, and any cloud content from you know uh, Google Drive and things like that. So if you go into it, you're going to see it all labeled out just like you would and go into the folders just like you would on a regular computer or a Mac. So that's really interesting. So the other thing we have here is news. News changed a little bit. So let me go into the news app. You've got a, a spotlight. You see right here, we got the spotlight. So we have a new spotlight section. So these are all the curated content from the editorial staff. So basically it's picked by the Apple news editorial staff each day. So you're just gonna get uh, some new stuff like that. Uh, another thing we have here is the camera. So what's really cool here is that we can do QR codes and I'm gonna move into here and I'm gonna show that we have some QR codes from let's say a menu. So I can just go ahead and um, open up the camera. And once it sees a QR code, it's going to go right to it. So let's see how that works. And you see open in Safari is right on top. Open in Safari. Go there. And I'm right into the Twitter account for this particular restaurant. And uh, that worked really well. Okay. So that is, that is part of the QR code scanning. The other thing we can do with photos is, is a live photo. So we can take a live photo and once we take a live photo, we can go and look at that photo. And normally, you know, a live photo, just this was taken at the local Starbucks. So we've got these, uh, this, this picture of people going around. We got a half, minute and a half, um, one, well, I'm sorry, one second and a half before, then we get a r regular picture, and then one, one and a half seconds after. That is what a live photo consists of. So you got a one, minute, one second and a half before, one second and a half after, an actual photo in the middle. So usually what they do is they take that thumbnail of the center photo. And, but now what we can do is we can edit this. And you'll see right down at the bottom that it picked that center picture and that is your thing. So I can move it over here and say, okay, it'll ask you, do you want to make this your key photo? And you just got to tap on that and it'll say make key photo. Okay, so I want that. So now you'll see that dot over the other section. That is now my, my section that, where, that is my photo that I want. You could do some more editing, you could trim it, you could do a lot of other things. I'm not gonna get into all that. But once you go done, that is now the picture that shows as your tile photo, okay? So that is uh, making it a lot better for, for the live photos. You can also loop, there's gonna be some looping. I didn't do any playing around with the looping, but you can loop a photo, a live photo, you can make it loop, you can make it uh, bump back and forth. So actually, um, you can make it look like a GIF. So that's really neat. And uh, maybe I'll do another video on how to do all that later, but that's really interesting. The other thing we can do is one uh, quick type one-handed keyboard. So let's go to that. So let's say I wanna, if, if I hold press on this, you're gonna see that come up right there. And this is your keyboard settings. So, so I use the emoji icon, I, I long pressed on that, and you'll see that you can make the keyboard go left, you can make it just full screen, or you can make it go right. So if I go right, I can go John and we, whatever. And you know, and, and we could do that, but I can do it one-handed. So I'm gonna do that one-handed. So let's see, I, can, I don't wanna send that. I wanna say hi. What's up? And I just type that one handed. Okay? And you can change, you have to change back the keyboard. So then I can go right, I can long press, and I can go back to the center. So there we go. So I'm gonna go into the settings right here. You know, down at the bottom when we swiped up, we've got the control center. And you go to control center, 
okay, you are going to get uh, customized controls. Okay, so this is all that can comes up in your settings, but you can add any other items that are supported in this particular area. So that's kind of cool. Um, do not disturb while driving. Now this is really nice. So basically, you can set when you're when you're driving in your car and it sees the Bluetooth in your car, and as soon as that happens and your screen is locked, it, any text messages that come to you will get an automatic reply. And what that reply looks like says, I am driving, uh, do not disturb, with do not disturb while driving turned on, I see your message when I get to where I'm going. I'll see your message when I get to where, where I'm going. I'm not receiving notifications. If this is urgent, reply urgent to the send notification through the, your original message. Here you go. And, uh, and that you need to turn on with, with do not disturb. So you, it comes on when the phone is locked uh, you want to always accept calls from your favorites, let's say, and you have other options. You can change it to all contacts and everything. Uh, but this is where you turn it on. So you go, I want this do not disturb while driving to activate either automatically or only when I'm connected to uh, car Bluetooth. And that's what I have it set at. Or manually, you can just turn it on as you want. Okay. So that is really um, a great feature. I was using it today and I, th I think it really works well. Another thing is the cop mode. I talked about this in the last video. So that is emergency SOS. So if I go to emergency SOS right here, I click on there. So if you click and you see that little animation, if you click the power button five times, it will require the passcode to unlock. So you can't just use your fingerprint. Uh, this helps you when you're going through customs and you don't want to open your phone or for whatever reason. The other thing that this does is it will uh, you can have it auto call 911 or it could be an emergency. Um, you know, if, if you are in danger, you could do that, right? So that is cop mode. So you just hit that five times and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to lock it and I'm going to hit it five times. Okay, so it says right here. Uh, slide to power off or call an emergency SOS. If you have a number set in there, once you do that, it'll go. Or you could have it auto do that if you had it set to that. So let me close out of that. Now I try to use my thumbprint. It won't let me in. Will not let me in. So we're going to need to put in our passcode. So I'm going to take it off screen, put in my passcode, and I'm in. Right? Okay, so where do we download this beta? So I'm going to put the link below. You just want to go to beta.apple.com. And I'm also going to link the link to macrumors.com. So this is the roundup of all these features I talked about and give you much more detail. So I'm going to put the link uh, for Mac Rumors down there so you can research all these fun uh, things. All right. So if you like this video and you found it helpful, make sure to hit that like button, share it with your friends, leave a comment, and make sure to subscribe because I post new videos and technology reviews and information weekly. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.